two, one. Welcome back to the Words from the Nerds podcast. This is episode 46? 40 47? Well, 40 shit, let me go check. Is that empty something? I don't know. It'll take a minute to check. Episode 46 of the podcast. And you know what we're talking about today? It's actually episode 45. I just checked right now. And we're talking <laughs> about The Last of Us season finale. First I, off, can you believe we're already here, bro? That's just, we talked about it a little bit before we started recording. That's just wild, man. We were just, it feels like we were just doing trailer reactions mm -hmm. for the upcoming season. And now it's freaking over, bro. Like, yeah, that is such a bummer, man. And I, I don't know how long it's going to be till season two, but. Man, I just it's tough, man. Yeah. I'm like, where do we go from here? You know, like I know, like we're we talking about Shazam. <laughs> like I saw that shit today. That is nothing on the last of us finale, bro. Crazy. <clears throat> I will say when I when we were trying to figure out what episode um this was, and I, I said 40 simpty, I was thinking like wow, we actually used to call people simps. Like that's great. <laughs> that, that's a word we used. That is so dumb. That was it's a so low corny point. now, bro. I'm that 100, yeah. 100. Like, <laughs> grow up, dude. Grow up. I don't think I've heard that word in so long. That's what made me think. Of. That's crazy. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're here to talk about the finale, and um, like we said, it's sad to see it go. Um, we're gonna talk about what we liked, what we disliked. Um, overall, we uh, very much enjoyed it. Um, but you know, have a I have a couple of gripes both with this episode and the overall season that I'll get into at some point. But it's a great night, you know. It's a yeah. celebration. We get to reinvigorate, reignite, or get to be here for the reignition of the age-old debate of if Joel was right or wrong <laughs> for what he did. Um, if yeah. Ellie should have gotten a choice if the fireflies are assholes or if the cure was even possible. And yeah. there's so many different lenses to look at this all, uh, all from was Joel an asshole for lying. There's so many different lenses to look at this from. And so, and that's what makes, that's part of what makes this story beautiful. And so, um, yep. and if you're one of those people that are like, bro, it's fiction, it's a fictional, get out, bro. Shut up. I hate you. <laughs> I hate you. That is so boring. You are boring if that's what you say. Oh my god, bro, dude! What uh, one thing like kind of along the lines of that? Because I was watching, because uh, I obviously I watched Shazam uh, tonight. Technically, last night's two thirty for me. Um, <laughs> I, I watched Shazam, and I was in the movie's not good. I, I'll let you know right now. The movie's Damn. not good. If you want to go look at my review, Aiden H talks here on YouTube. Go like it up. Mm. Go spam it with views. The movie wasn't that great right and so like i'm in the middle of watching this and i'm like i wonder if these actors ever kind of like are saying these lines and they kind of take a step back in their mind and they're like what am i doing like <laughs> you know what like there's this line the villain says something like we need the seed for the garden of you know athena or whatever and i'm like i wonder if she ever sits there and she's like what am I doing, bro? Like, <laughs> she's getting doing? she's getting a check. That's what she's doing, bro. Facts, <laughs> you know, dude. Damn it's, well. it's so funny, like to think of these like older people sitting here acting in a superhero movie. I wonder if they ever have that realization where they're like, "What the hell am I doing?" Like, this is you know, I could be out here making like some some straight cinema, some art. You know, I could be out here like winning best best lead actress, best lead actor, and I'm over here making like. <laughs> Shazam movie <laughs> that like teenagers are gonna watch. I don't know. I just thought that was funny. I was like, I wonder if they ever step back and they're like, oh geez. But it kind of made me think about it. it's just fiction, bro. It's just fiction. <laughs> I it's, hate re that. it's real to me. It's real to me. <laughs> See, and like I didn't even have to be like, I know you're joking, but it doesn't even have to be real. It's like, bro, if you connect to these characters, like you connect to these like bro i'll be the first to admit bro i love spider-man with my whole entire oh, yeah. heart bro and i know he's a fictional character but i bro i've learned a lot from people that don't even exist i that's a quote okay. that i didn't even i didn't come up with i i read that somewhere but i love it so much because it's so damn true bro not even just spider-man there's so many there's video game characters like joel or like um nathan drake who i love a lot um 
You know, it, like you could say it's fiction all the live long day, but like honestly, bro, just have a little fun. Have a little fun yeah. in your life, you know? Let well, let loose. Yeah, and I'm glad you bring that up because I've I've seen so much videos on TikTok of people saying that um like people that were watching the the show with their dad and I, it was that meme of Ellie holding her heart whenever uh, she, whenever Joel's like um, I lied to you. Tell, yeah, it tells her. And yeah, and and they're like uh after this episode my dad came in my room and he said, "I just want to let you know I don't give a fuck what happened or who it was. I would have done the exact same thing for you." And it's like that shit sits with people, you know? Yeah. Like it resonates with people, whether it's like real or not. Like there's something to be said about um, everything that happens and everything that these stories teach us. And like even the character of Joel, like there's times where I sit and contemplate about it. And I'm like, and I love it even more because I'm like, he's such an obscure character. He's such an obscure person. He's such a complex person. And it's just so interesting how he was written, the decisions that he made um and it, it just gives you a lot to think about you know i look at joel and i'm like and, and we'll get into this later when we when we talk back and forth but uh about his decision but i look at him and i'm like i would do that same thing like even if i wouldn't have in the past after watching this i would now you know seeing someone like that mm -hmm. uh if it were my daughter yeah i would do this the same exact thing um seeing as how much he loves ellie seeing as, as how much he loves um, Sarah. That's something to look up to. That's something to, to want to be like, what? And, and again, he is flawed and, and he goes about it um, in wrong ways. He makes mistakes, but it's all out of love for um, his daughter and um, a friend that he found uh, a, a daughter role. He found in Ellie. And that's something to look forward. That's, or that's something to look up to. That's something to admire regardless of how you feel about his decisions yeah and so it's even stuff like that like to tie it back to the last of us yeah and i listen to the podcast episode the official hbo podcast um on this finale today and they talk about neil specifically talks about how back when they were making the game they had play testers tested out um and if they got to the end of the game they would ask them what did they think about joel's decision and if they weren't apparent, the the answer was, was kind of 50 50 on if they were like were if they agreed with him or not. But every single one of them that was apparent with 100 percent certainty said that they would do the <laughs> same damn thing. And that's a hundred like I get that. That's that is true. That is a human thing to want to do. Protect your tribe, protect everything that, you know, And I think Neil took it a step further. Um, he said that when he was a kid, um, him and his uh him his him and his family are from Israel and he there was something going on uh back then I I'm, I'm blanking on the, the exact details but um uh, he asked his dad like do you think this is okay and he's and then his dad was like well it depends are you asking me it had something to do with um the prime minister and then like his his son or something like that and he's like it depends are you asking me as the as the prime minister or are you asking me as that boy's father because I can give you two different answers and so I think that is um, a huge, a huge thing that adds to the complexity of of Joel and and um, why he made that decision. And again, I've I've you know me, I've been I've been on record saying that it makes Joel more human. It's a more human decision uh, to do something like that. And whether whether I think it's right or wrong, I think it was the human thing to do. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't think there's a definitive right or wrong answer to it. I know I always say that he's wrong, um, even though I understand the decision, but even then I, I can acknowledge the fact that I don't, it's not a hard set. He's absolutely wrong answer. It's just, yeah, I, I can view that what he did was wrong on multiple facets, you know? And uh, I think even to, to some degree, Joel apologists, as they like to call themselves, uh, <laughs> would, would, would agree, uh, would agree to, to a certain extent that he made the, some wrong mistakes, uh, some wrong mistakes. I don't know if you can make a right mistake, I guess, but uh, he made some mistakes, uh, in that situation as well. At least I would hope so. I would hope that you're not, you Joel apologists um, wouldn't just blindly think that everything that he did was correct in that situation. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real. Uh, I, I will say 
I'm one of the Joel apologists that is able to see both sides of it. All right. Yeah. So let's. let's no, I wasn't that even. Out of the way. I wasn't even calling you. No, out, no, out no. Specifically, <laughs> I was just because I, especially on TikTok nowadays, bro. I feel like all the videos I've seen after the finale that are blowing up, like the hundreds of thousands of likes, are all Joel apologist videos, and they just like. Yeah. And it, it, it goes back to what I was talking about with, oh, it's just fiction because they look at it. It's just like Joel's gun goes burr. And like, bro, all right, dog. Like we get like, yeah. yes, it's it's actually I would I would find that more funny if we were talking about the game. If if we were talking about the game, I would find that a lot more funny because, yeah, that's true. Like you're sitting there doing it like you're shooting the flamethrower around. It's funny. It's a it's a video game. But the way they played it in the show, I'm not sitting there like. <laughs> Joel's gun goes brrr, like no I'm yeah. not thinking that bro I'm thinking like holy shit he is absolutely massacring everybody in this damn hospital the music the, the audio almost completely cuts away you just hear this like some of the they in the podcast they say that it's Gustavo Santolai's saddest track that he's ever made for the franchise and it's the music that plays at, in the game when Joel is bringing Ellie out of the hospital um, so instead they put that with him murdering everybody in the hospital. It definitely plays as more of a, this is horrific, um, a horrific act kind of way. And then, so if your takeaway is like, <laughs> Joel's gun goes, brrr, I'm sitting here, I'm yeah. thinking not to get up on my ego, but like, I feel like I have a higher level of, of comprehension <laughs> than you do. Like, I don't understand. Yeah. Um, and and you're trying to tell me that like I I look at like fiction too seriously, which I mean maybe to a degree I I, I do, but uh, I feel like this is meant to strike and spark conversation. And if you think otherwise, I think that's boring. I think you're boring. <laughs> yeah, I saw this video the other day. It was like uh, it was I think it was it was making fun of the fireflies. I can't I can't um, reiterate exactly what it was saying, but it was something along the lines of when you don't give a little girl a decision uh when you're a group of um uh, when you're a group of of something and you don't give a little girl a decision to um or consent or a decision to make a cure that could possibly not even be made and it was just all this stuff basically calling out the fireflies and there's always those two sides of it it's like either you know joel joel did something wrong and you know the fireflies did something wrong or the fireflies are wrong and Joel is right. Mm -hmm. And um, it was basically like Joel is right propaganda on my TikTok feed. And it was so funny because I was like, the, the part that got me the most was for a cure that most likely doesn't even exist and can't even be made. And I'm like, and I don't know if it's someone that has played the game before or hasn't. I saw the video like a while ago. Um but it's just so funny seeing the two polar opposite sides of it. It's like either Joel's right or Joel's wrong. And so are the fly fries or just firefly hate because of what they did. <laughs> so and funny. That's, and I made a TikTok about this. I, I find speaking of boring, I just find that cure discussion boring. Cause, I, and I was having a discussion with, with my sister about this. Cause she experienced the story for the first time with the show. And I asked her what she thought, and she thinks Joel was right as well. And then she starts going into the cure thing. I'm like, you don't need to go into all that with me because I, I I just find that justification boring because I don't think it needs to be justified. If you think he was right, should we stop for the train or no? Can you hear it? Yeah. Oh, my God. I don't hear Wait. it now, though. Yeah, it's like it's in between horns. Why is it so close? I don't even live next to a train track. <laughs> Like, I don't. I'm trying to think where the nearest train track is for me. Like, why is that shit so loud? <laughs> I'm waiting for the next horn. I didn't even know it was that loud. No, yeah, I heard it, I heard it twice, I think. Jesus. I don't hear it now, though. It might be gone. I don't want to say that, and then you're like, all right, so basically, the <laughs> it don't matter, it don't matter. Um, all right, yeah, we're good. We can just keep going. Because <laughs> it was this was her first time experiencing the story, and I, I I told her like you don't need to tell me any of that because I just think that this whole discussion doesn't need to be justified. If you think one way about it, that's the way you think about it. You don't have to justify your reasoning because at that point you're just trying to make it more one sided one way or the other, and that's 
largely what the cure discussion is about in my eyes. If you bring up, oh, they wouldn't have been able to distribute it. They wouldn't have been able to make it. They, oh, they killed their, they would kill their one host. Yes, these are all true things. You're adding pointless realism to a, f and again, I know this sounds like I'm going back on what I just talked about with fiction, but you're adding pointless realism to a fictional setting where if they're telling you that they think they can do it, then I'm going to believe that I think that they can do it. And that's what Joel is thinking as well. The, yeah. what, what it comes down to is that's what Joel is sitting there thinking. Joel is like, I'm going to let the damn world burn because I want to save my new surrogate daughter. Yeah. And that that's what the discussion should be in my eyes. If you think he's right, you think he's right. You don't have to justify that to me. If you think he's wrong, you think he's wrong. You don't have to justify that to me. <clears throat> I think you can add little explanations of uh, as to why you think he did what he did. Um, like how I say, I think he did what he did because he's human um, and that kind of thing. But overall, I, I've always found anything revolving around the cure and its efficacy is just a, such a weird way to try to shift the conversation specifically to one side. And it, I, it irks me so bad because there's, Every single video that talks about the, the cure like that blows up, bro. Gets tons yeah, and tons yeah. of likes and stuff. And it's like, bro, you guys are missing the point to me. In my eyes, you're missing the point. But yeah. Um, it's funny you say that because I so I found the video I was talking about. Um, I had it all wrong. So this is what it says. And it's funny you say that because it has a hundred thousand likes, right? Oh and God. before I say anything, let me read you some of the comments. In all caps, Joel did absolutely nothing wrong. Uh, and then someone else said the only wrong thing Joel did was lie to Ellie about it. <laughs> like, uh, anyway, so it says it's in quotes and it's a it's a meme. It's basically some guy yelling. I didn't do nothing wrong. I didn't do anything, whatever. And so it's a quote and it says, did you just take the brain out of our only research subject with an unhinged surgery that has no medical basis and could never have led to a vaccine? And then it says firefly doctor with two years of medical school from 2003 <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's the part it's the part of could have never led to a vaccine it's like mm -hmm. again it's not the subject at hand it's not the yeah. topic that we should be talking about it's about joel not caring whether it could be made or not taking her out of there you know like it, it does the cure being able to be made or not doesn't really matter and that's something we talked about in episode one or two about um, when they had those cold opens about not being able to find a vaccine for fungal viruses. And um, you had brought that up about it doesn't matter um, whether the cure can be made or not. And I've seen you go into bat for it uh, on, on TikTok because it truly does not matter. What matters is what Joel did in that hospital and, taking Ellie away from there. And then he doubles down and lies on it. Yeah. Like I can defend the part of, Hey, I would do the same thing. You know, if, if, um, my daughter had a, um, could have had a surgery that could have led to a vaccine to save an apocalyptic world. I don't care. Like I'm taking her and we're going back to Jackson and living the rest of our days out chilling. Exactly. Like that's what I'm doing. And, I stand by Joel for that. You know, it, is it the right thing to do? No, but I wouldn't do the right thing either. Um, yeah. So that's fine. But to turn around and um, lie to her about it and mm -hmm. basically make her, it, it's the making her immunity not mean anything to her. You know, there yep. was dozens like you and turns out they stopped looking for a cure, a way to make a cure. And it's rough, dude. It's, it's rough. And I don't want to dive into uh, season two stuff yet. We'll talk about that at the end. Um, but there's a a line in the beginning of the second game that like showcases that Joel knows that it meant a lot to her. Joel know he and I'll, I'll talk about it at the end. I, that's all I'll, I'll say on it. But yeah. um, so if you couple that with the way he treated this situation, and depending on how you look at it, yes, sure you lie to your loved ones a lot of the time to protect them. Um, that's like the basis of almost every superhero seeking secret identity uh, story kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. And yes, that's true. And there's even the theme of lying in this episode with 
uh, Ellie's mom having lied to Marlene uh, about cutting the umbilical cord, the umbilical cord, excuse me, um, before she was bit. But we know that that's not true. And I think even Marlene knows that that's not true. Uh, yeah. But Anna is her childhood friend. She needs to, she's going to like try to honor her uh, best way she can. But yes, well, that's true. You lie to your loved ones to protect them. I don't necessarily think that Joel is protecting her here. Like he's, he might think that he is. I think that he thinks he is a hundred percent, but the reality of it is it's like you talk, like, it's like you said that this lie is hurting her more than it is helping her because, and granted, I think Ellie's idea, idea of herself is very hurtful and very self harm. Like not, not self. I don't think self harming is the world detrimental um, to to her self image, like she views herself as she's nothing but her immunity. Like yeah. she has nothing else to offer but her immunity. Very detrimental, very toxic. I don't think that she has a lot more to offer. She does, and I think, but the where she's at right now, that's what she thinks is important. And so, Joel just flat out lying to her, telling her that she's not special. Everything that she did to get here, thinking that she is special is ripped away from her all by him saying that. And yeah. so that's what I think is the compelling part of the ending um, at Benja movies uh, <laughs> is because you're, you're watching it and she wanted this to be, to be true for herself. She wanted this to be true because she wanted her life to matter. And, Joel is telling her that it didn't matter as much as she hoped it would, essentially, when you boil it down. Um, it matters to Joel, and don't get me wrong, he he, he very much loves Ellie. He loves her, as we're, we're going to talk about um, in earlier scenes in this episode. I know we kind of skipped to the end of the episode, because it's just like... <laughs> I, honestly, I was thinking about it, and I was like, yeah, but how much people would really listen all the way to the end? Like, if we're like, all right, so like... If we talk about like the beginning and like the steps, like starting with uh, Ellie's mom and everything, and then save the big stuff for the last, I was like, you know, what? why don't we just jump in? Like, this yeah. is the first time all season we've gotten to actually talk full season spoilers, just because it's True. all out there. Um, mm -hmm. And like, like why not just dive into it and just fucking tackle everything? Like, yeah, not as yeah. well. I agree. I agree. Um, and so I think that she was looking at at, at him lying. And he, she gave her, she gave him a chance to be truthful, and asked and asked him like, "Is everything that you said about the fireflies true?" And he doubles down without without so much as a light hesitation, stares her in the eyes and says, "I swear." And I think this this time around, it's a lot more um, concrete what Ellie's viewpoint on um, Joel doubling down is. Uh, and they talk about it in the podcast a little bit as well. Um, there are definitely multiple different ways you can take it, but I, I I think that Bella Ramsey's delivery of that okay was very deliberate this time around. Whereas like the first time I played the game, I feel like I very easily could have taken that okay that Ashley Johnson uh, Ashley Johnson delivered as like okay she uh, she kind of believes him. Like it was a very yeah. soft and like. Um, I love you. Okay. Like I trust you and okay. Um, but this time the, uh, the way I got it from Bella was like, okay, you're lying to me, but I love you and I'm going to try to move past it. And yeah. so I don't know. And again, it's up for interpretation. Don't let me take that, uh, interpretation away from anybody, but that's just the way I read it here. And I think, and again, I, I understand Joel's motivations. Again, I think it makes him human. Let me preface the fact that I find Joel human, but I do think that he does more wrong in this situation than he does right. And so, yeah, yeah, in my exactly. Um, and it makes it tough because we've talked about this a couple of times, but like everybody's in the wrong in this situation. Like there is really no clear. It's not black and white, you know. Um, the doctors obviously didn't give her a choice. Um, Ellie didn't know she was going to die uh, on that table. Um, so we don't know whether she would have said yes or no. I mean, 
you can you could say all day long and i i honestly i see the argument for yes she would have given her life on that table she would have said yes make the cure um this is what it all leads up to um but hindsight's 2020 it's easy for her um well i guess that's a little bit part two shit yeah. um, nobody's in the right here it's uh it's not all black and white um on both sides of it um firefly should have given her a choice firefly should have told her hey this is what we're thinking um we'll have to do uh joel lied to her joel took that away from her uh marlene kind of just springing springing back up on ellie and being like oh hey you know like we get to kill you sorry and you're <laughs> not gonna get a choice um which makes it all complex like i, I know and again i'm not Ben, if you're listening, I'm not trying to harp on you too much, but um, I've seen a lot of people actually uh, feel this way. One of my managers at work, uh, my boy Philip, if you're watching this, if you're listening to this, what's up, man? Uh, he came up to me and he said, I can't believe it ended like that. He hadn't played the game. He played a little bit of it and his girlfriend actually played the whole game. So he didn't know what was going to happen. And so he's watching it with her the whole time. And he came up to me and he's like, man, I can't believe it ended like that. Like what it, 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 he was just going crazy. And um, Ben actually uh, was kind of mixed on it. He was kind of mixed on how uh, it ended so abruptly that he didn't think it would end right there. And it kind of fell a little bit flat. Um, I don't know if that's what my manager thought about it as well. But either way, um, it's a... It's not the biggest, craziest payoff, but it is in a sense of just like, here's your story. It's hard to explain. It, we're going on this story with Joel and Ellie, with the Fireflies, with the Cure, everything that they've been on in this journey. And that last chunk right there, the hospital scene, Joel massacring everybody up until Joel lying, is like an explosion of storylines and things to take in and think about compared to a season finale such as like breaking bad or some of these marvel shows where it is literally a spectacle blow up of a finale <laughs> um and that's and not to say that not to compare these two shows because they are different in their own ways but that's another thing with like even the Better Call Saul, uh, Better Call Saul finale, because a lot of people's gripes with that show is that it's like just super slow, and it is. It's a slow burn. You get your little bursts of cartel action in there, and um, it's stuff like that. But at its heart, at its center, it's it's um, Jimmy, Kim, and Chuck. It's it's a show about lawyers and lawyer drama, and it's it's finale is essentially the same as the last of us it's not a big like walter white steps in there with an automatic ar on his on the, in, in, in the truck in of the, his in the uh, car <laughs> yeah in the trunk of his car just brrr. it's not nothing like that it's just a final episode blowing up full of thoughts and words and thoughts and um complexity all throughout dialogue and if you take away just like the pure massacre that Joel goes on and you look at like the fireflies, Marlene, him and Ellie, it's essentially the same thing. Um, it's just a matter of knowing that it's, it's taking more of this like dialogue driven direction than a huge spectacle MCU DC uh, TV show direction. And so I truly do think this is the best place you could leave it off on. And it will seem abrupt because of of episodes like five, of, of episodes like episode two, and um, a little bit of one, like with clickers and everything. Um, you're expecting this big, oh, Joel's infected, or like this horde of, of clickers comes through and Joel gets bit or whatever, when it's really just this um, crazy um, everything of just dialogue and joel's decision yeah and so i kind of think that is the perfect place to end it off on i think that is the the big you know blow up ending that everyone's looking for you just have to look for it and right. you just have to understand like 
everything that led up to this decision, everything that led up to the Fireflies and everybody involved, not just Joel, which makes it like as grand as it is. Yeah. If any of that makes sense. No. Yeah. And I think um, that's where I differ um, the most uh, from, from Ben's uh, point of view on the movie or the, the show, excuse me, the finale. And, because I, I I think back to all the setup for for this, because um, you and I knew better better than Ben did, because Ben hasn't played the game. Um, I think back to episode three, the the note, which you know, if you've played the game, I've heard a lot of people say that that was a little on the nose. Which sure, yeah, it's a, on the nose for us because we know what happens. Um, but for the overarching crowd of people that had no idea, that was just like a oh yeah, Joel, Joel's going to be a badass in the future, but they subvert that expectation. And throughout the entire season, Joel fails multiple, yeah. multiple, multiple times. And I love that change. Um, Bill leaves the note and says, God help any motherfucker that stands in our way. But yet every step along this journey, Joel is barely, barely getting Ellie to safety. Each, yeah. each time. Um, there's a few exceptions, like everything in uh, Kansas City. Joel made it out of there just fine, pretty much until the very end when, and he talks about this in episode six, when uh, Henry has the gun uh, and, and Joel kind of freezes up and doesn't really do anything about it. Um, but then you get to episode six and Joel loses it, breaks down in front of Tommy talking about how he's not who he used to used to be. He just he can't protect her like that anymore. Uh, can't protect someone like that anymore. And so all of this was building to Joel doing that one thing, the one thing that he used to be really damn good at, and he wants to show that he's still decently damn good at it, yeah. taking out an entire hospital full of guys. And so you juxtapose that with Ellie, who arguably is the is the main character of the show, um, depending on who you ask, um, or she is the main character. Uh, maybe maybe yeah, not even up to debate. Yeah, yeah, that's her story. Um, but specifically, Ben mentioned, uh, and I and I know we're talking about um, one of one of our friends, and and, and, <laughs> and so, so some of you might be lost. But basically, his if I if I'm understanding correctly, and I hope I'm not misspeaking for him, but it, uh, he. He thought it would have been better that uh, with all the buildup to Ellie throughout her entire life, having lost so many people, especially even on this journey, um, all the people she's lost um, and, and, and have, have just left her, that ending the finale with Joel getting bit and then getting to the hospital and then trying to come up with some sort of cure using Ellie, and then the season would end with Joel, Joel's fate being uncertain. Like, we have no idea if Joel will survive or anything like that. And I don't necessarily think that's a bad idea. Um, I just don't exactly think that that fully speaks to all the different themes that we saw throughout the show. But anyway, back to Ellie. You juxtapose everything with Joel with Ellie. Yes, Ellie, throughout her entire life, has had so much loss, so much trauma. Everyone has either died or left her. And she says that to Joel directly. So the one person, the one person who finally will not die and will not leave her and has protected her can't even be truthful with her, you yeah. know, is lying to her about the one thing that she finds most important in this world, her immunity, because she has heavy, heavy survivor's guilt. And so it's like, no matter what, Ellie just can't catch a break with the people that she cares about. And even in, in, in this long journey, this long and hard journey, she found a father figure. She found someone that she can love. Um, but this person is deceitful with her. And, and, and as far as she knows, potentially took the one thing away that would have severely, severely mattered to her. And so I think that ending the show with that is such a compelling and, and heartbreaking thing. Um, thinking about Ellie specifically and everything that she's gone through. And it's just like, it seems like a never ending fight for her. 
kind of. And, and, and I think that speaks to her violent nature kind of a, a, as well, because it's just, she always feels like she has to fight, whether that's emotionally, mentally, physically, you know, and, and, and that's all kind of coming to a head here. But, you know, we've talked to Ben ab about that uh, ourselves and, you know, he's very headstrong about it. So <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> um, well, and I like what you say about Ellie always feels the need to fight because that's something that Riley even pointed out to her. And um, this is just one of many things that they were building up to um, in this finale about Riley telling her, you don't always have to fight everyone and everything. Sometimes you have to choose what's more important or um, choose what's more important to fight for um, in any sense. Um, Ooh, and, uh, that's actually, can I, sorry to cut you off. Yeah, yeah, that, no, you're that's actually a really good, because that makes me think like she's heeding that advice in a way here at the end. Like she's choosing not to fight Joel on it. She knows he's lying, but she's choosing not to fight him on it. There's a time and a place yeah. for it. Damn, that's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah. And, and we and that the whole time and place. I mean, we know. If you know, you know. Um, and just any other thing, because I like how you how you brought up the note from Bill. God help any mother efforts that stand in our way. And we didn't see that. We didn't see that for a good what five episodes yeah until now god helped those mfers that stood in his way but where was all of that you know the the entire uh season leading up and that's what we were so just ready to see mm -hmm. you know and it's callbacks like like episode three and episode five with with henry and sam where henry looks at him and he says so what since i gave up my leader to fedra does that make me a bad guy um am i the bad person because i traded him for some medicine to keep my brother alive am i the bad person and um again that can even fuel joel's ego and and add to his decision so it's all these things that he's seen and experienced throughout the season um bill henry um um uh, trying to think of the other one uh even his conversation with tommy and what was the uh, what was the other one we had just brought up? Shit, I'm, uh, I think that yeah, talking to Tommy about freezing up uh, Bill's letter and uh, Henry talking about his brother. Yeah, I think those were the only ones I, yeah, I yeah. brought up. Anyways, um, those three things, all of those things leading up to um, this finale, where he doesn't freeze, he doesn't let God help these MFers that are standing in his way, and he doesn't think he's a bad guy because he's protecting who he loves. Um, all of these people influencing Joel's actions to where in one big spectacle of a finale, we get to see it all play out. Yeah. Um, and even the Ellie side of it too, with uh, Riley, like we had just talked about um, everything with Sam, her feeling like this, this immunity needs to mean something. This, this journey needs to mean something when she looks at Joel and tells him um, this can't all be for nothing. Right. Mm hmm eventually walking into that hospital together um so it's just beautiful storytelling is it's it's such a great way to build up your big finale um and and your big decision um especially on joel's side and i kind of wish they would have um done a little bit more with uh the whole ellie of it but then again i mean ed joel makes the biggest decision in here um because I, because i like to think this is ellie's story um but you, someone can easily watch this first season with, with how much they build up Joel with everything he does at the end and easily say this is Joel. Joel's the main character. Yeah. Um, yeah. Especially with like how the season started and everything with him. Yeah, like, exactly. Carol, especially, yeah. Um, which is why I'm grateful for The Last of Us Part Two, Uh, because this is very much Ellie's story. I think she is the main character of The Last of Us and the story The Last of Us has to tell. Um, yeah. So I can't complain on them not touching on her because this this first season is is pretty much, um, I mean, as we see leading up to to uh, all on Joel. Yeah. Um, but speaking of uh, not touching too much on uh, some some aspects of Ellie, um, I had mentioned before we started recording a, 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 something I wanted to talk about, and you'd mentioned it a little bit. Um, I think uh, a few minutes ago. But the two scientists that we see in episode one and two, um, 
this is something I didn't really enjoy about the show that much. And I, I don't know if both of the scientists were uh, mycologists, um, scientists that study uh, fungi, but I know the second one was. Not that it really matters. Both scientists hammer the home the point you cannot make a vaccine or a cure for fungal infections. They hammer that point home. And I remember that was something like you, like you mentioned, we talked about that back when, back when that happened. And there was also a, a large talking point for a lot of people at that time, because they were just being introduced to Ellie and her immunity and this adventure that they were going to have to go on, especially at the, at the end of episode two, after episode two was done airing, people were like, well, they're supposed to go on this journey, but these, scientists said that it's not even possible and so i was like just wait i was very much of like i'm sure they're going to explain and show us how it is more possible because of ellie and granted one could say that even ellie's sheer existence and the existence of her immunity is impossible compared to what those scientists said previously and yeah yes i agree with that but i think from an outside perspective, uh, from from a new viewer to the to the to the show, someone who hasn't experienced the game, I don't think that's enough to buy. And 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 again, if you are just experiencing the show for the first time, be, feel free to correct us in the comments. Anything like that, correct me in the comments, because um, I'm sp very much speaking. I can't sp fully speak for people who have just only seen the show. Um, I actually should have brought this up to Ben. That would have been a good, uh, good thing to think about first. But whatever. Um, but as someone, for someone who has not experienced the game and is just experiencing the show for the first time, why would I be inclined to believe at the end of this story in the finale that they can make a cure with Ellie? Because those two scientists before the world collapsed were very adamant about the fact that, and in two different millenniums those those scientists were, were were talking about you cannot make a fungal vaccine or a fungal cure um so why and this gets into the whole cure discussion that i don't really like to talk about but i'm not really trying to make a, a case for that i'm just saying it seems like the show is trying to tell us that it wouldn't be possible because almost at every turn they're showing us that it, it, it it's such an impossibility. Granted, there's there's things that spark small discussions, like when Ellie rubbed her blood on Sam's uh, Sam's bite. Obviously, it, they talk about it a little bit. Joel says, "I imagine it's a lot more complicated than that." And yeah, it is. But even when you get to the finale, and Marlene tells Joel what the plan is to make a vaccine or a cure. She says that there was this chemical messenger that grew up with Ellie and the chemical messenger tells the invading cordyceps from a bite that Ellie already is cordyceps. And so the cordyceps doesn't want to, to take over Ellie. But I guess then that would leave me with the question of like, well, why is that just a chemical messenger? Why did that chemical messenger not turn into cordyceps and that kind of thing? And so granted, those scientists have never dealt with someone who was immune before. I know that 100%. But just because you're immune doesn't mean that you can make a, a vaccine or a cure out of it. <clears throat> and so it's just, it seems like the show can't decide the message it wants to convey, to me anyway. Because you compare that, that whole, it seems like they're trying to set up a cure wouldn't work thing with how they convey Joel's actions in the hospital. Like I mentioned before, they portrayed them as very horrific and very violent and very like disturbing to watch. And so why would they convey it like that if I'm supposed to, as a new viewer, I'm sitting here thinking like, well, they can't make a cure anyway. Those scientists yeah. in the first episode, in the, in the first two episodes told me they can't and Ellie's blood didn't work with Sam and I don't understand these chemical messengers. They're not going to be able to make a cure. So Joel's doing the absolute right thing. And so I think that that takes away, and I already mentioned how I think that that cure thing takes away from the nuance of it, but it, I feel like the show just didn't really do a decent job of, of, of conveying that the cure would be a surefire thing. Or And, and I also mentioned this before we started recording, maybe juxtaposing that with Joel's 
horrific actions like you're you're meant to look at it in two different ways it, like it's supposed to be morally ambiguous in not only just the decision but in the maybe the cure wouldn't work or and and also maybe joel what joel is doing is right because the cure wouldn't work kind of thing i feel like i'm rambling at this point but i, I don't know i did i thought they would the other i was waiting for the other shoe to drop all season when it came yeah. to those two scientists and i just felt like it never really did um so what if say we got we got two cold opens the first two episodes uh like we we got those two those uh i think it was the first two episodes we got those two cold opens um and then after that it stopped what if these last these final two episodes episode eight and nine um granted eight probably wouldn't have um no yeah eight, eight yeah, yeah it doesn't really matter so what if we had a cold open where um okay okay what if we had a cold open where Marlene was having a discussion with another firefly, where Marlene was having a discussion with surgeons, or where even we just saw the doctors or the surgeons talking about, hey, there is someone that's immune out there. Do you think there'd be a way to make a cure? And just and they don't even have to come out right and say, yes, a cure would be able to, to be made or not. But even just to talk about it or just to see, hey, well, there could there be a chance? And it's like, well, we have to crunch a lot of data. We have to do this, this, and this. I don't know a for sure answer yet. Um, mm -hmm. It would all just depend. That way you have your your two cold opens from um, this long ago and then from outbreak about, hey, uh, we don't think a cure can be made. And then you have your last two cold opens being – hey, well, I don't know. There's someone that's immune. We haven't dealt with this before. We'd have to crunch the numbers, but there could be a chance. Um, at least showing the um, the before and after of, of the apocalypse and um, the before and after of finding someone immune. Um, even just something like that. Um, because, ooh, and I'll say I'll save the other part of that for the um, part two. Uh, discussion yeah um but even just something like that to kind of just clarify or just to kind of show that ellie's immunity is something to take into account because i think certain people can sit there and be like oh well they've never had to deal with someone that's immune but other people could just see it as that hey her blood isn't working um we had two cold opens that they said that a cure wasn't possible joel's doing the right thing yeah. um so even just something to kind of like throw a wrench in those people's train of thought and be like, oh, shit, wait. Yeah, maybe something can be done about this. Or damn, maybe uh, uh, I should think about how they haven't had to deal with anybody that's immune to this new infection. Um, even just something like that. What would you think about something like that? Yeah, Because like I, I, I agree because I, I feel like just ellie's immunity in and of itself uh, and again correct me if i'm wrong because I, I i'm someone who has played the game um <laughs> i am someone who has played the game i don't i i don't just have the context of the tv show but if i'm sitting there watching it i i'm more inclined to listen to the words of these two scientists i think than i am just the existence of ellie and her immunity i uh, i I didn't watch those two episodes with the scientists at the beginning and then realize Ellie's immune and be like, oh, what if they're wrong? I feel like that's the thing. Maybe that's what I'm trying to, to, to hammer home here. I feel like they didn't do a decent job of trying to make me question what those scientists were saying because I very much just took that what those scientists were saying as fact because – it's very, they're cold opens. I'm supposed to be horrified by what I'm watching, what I'm listening to. And damn, they did a damn good job with that. I will hammer that, that a hundred percent. That opening for episode one, I still love it so much. The, the way the talk show host is like, so if that happens and the scientist is like, we lose. Oh my <laughs> God, it gives me chills right now. And then you think about the mycologist in episode two, where she's like, there's no way to make a fungal cure, fungal vaccine. She's like, bomb the city. Bomb <laughs> everyone in it. 
chills, bro. Absolute chills. So it does a great job of setting up the doom and gloom of this world. But I think it does that almost too effectively because I'm sitting there after listening to them, especially the one, two punch of episode one and two, both of those scientists in both of those episodes back to back. I'm not questioning them after I'm like, Oh, well, Ellie's, Im I feel like the response they want me to have is Ellie's immune. Oh my God. Those scientists might be wrong, but I don't feel that. I don't get that yeah. from that. I'm sitting there and I'm like, well, those scientists, they were, <laughs> they were right so far. So far, the first one was right. We're, yeah. We lose. Uh, it seems like the infected are winning. And even the second scientist was like, bomb the city. Even that, 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 that came to pass. Everything that she tried to like help avoid, she was, she was absolutely right. And so I'm not left questioning these scientists like I think the show wants me to be. And so I just I, I don't think they did a, a decent job at trying to discredit what they were saying. I think that's the best way I can put it. I think I put it in a pretty, yeah. pretty good way. So, yeah. Um, or I mean, even just uh, uh, you could even just be ambiguous about it, uh, especially with how good those first two cold opens are um, hammering that point home. Even if you just drop one, one cold open in the last episode, and it could just be two surgeons talking, and they could be talking about a cure, talking about Ellie, and, I mean, one could be doubtful too. Hey, all signs point to there's no way to cure this thing. And the other one looks at him and says, but we've never had to deal with anybody that's immune to it. Boom. Cuts in, title card. And that's it. You don't even have to hammer it home. You can just lay it down. So then you're thinking – well, shit, that's a good point, you know, mm -hmm. and you don't have to shove it. You don't have to hold anyone's hand through it because, I mean, you could easily mess it all up and have someone be like, well, you know, we have someone immune. Oh, well, you know what? I've never thought of, of the immunity and you can hammer it home or you can just be as nonchalant with it as those first two were Either, just something to kind of get that point across to casual viewers. I hate saying casual viewers, but even something just to get that point across to people that aren't considering ellie's immunity and are yeah. just going off of what the show is trying to tell you mm -hmm. which is ultimately a fault of the show which is you know i agree yeah um and that'll that that leads i don't know if i actually want to jump into that point just yet it's not um season two uh part two spoilery thing or anything like that um just kind of uh, overall i i still after all of this i think i find the game to be better than the show still uh, and I know, I know there was a couple moments early on uh, in episode one and two and three. We were like super right in the hype of the show. Yeah. And we said there's more. I still do stand by like there's moments that the show does better than the game. Sarah's death being one of them. Ellie killing David being another one. I think there's moments that the show does better than the game. But I think overall the game is just better. Just because like there you thinking about the fact that you get to control these characters, you, you feel more connected to them because you could not that they didn't do it. Like I still very much felt connected to Joel and Ellie in, in the show. They did a damn good job of, con of conveying those emotions to me and making me sit with those emotions, even making me connect to Henry and Sam. I mean, if you're, unless you're Ben, then you're just like, Oh, this is repetitive. <laughs> yourself, a little weirdo. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm too mean to Ben all the time on these, bro. Uh, um but uh overall i just think i think the game um as weird as it sounds i don't i feel like this doesn't even really need to be said because it i don't know if it was ever really in question that this was going to surpass the game so i don't think this is something that i really need to say but i just i feel like i want to say it just because we there are many moments where we said like oh i'm jealous of the people getting to experience it like this for the first time I, I, I do very much think the game is still the better way to experience this story. Let me yeah. just end it with that. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, uh, especially some stuff like I want to touch on what, uh, you know, who Jay Buck Studios is. Uh, Sounds super familiar. Yeah, he works with heavy spoilers and he's on TikTok. If you see him, you'll, you'll uh, probably recognize him. He said one thing that he really didn't like about the last couple episodes of The Last of Us was the fact that it played out exactly like the game uh and he said that after doing so much stuff different especially and this goes back to how you were talking about the hive mind 
that these last couple episodes, they didn't take any leaps. They didn't change it up a bit and they didn't take any creative freedom in them like they did in the past uh in the earlier stages of the season mm-hmm. and that he didn't really like that about it and uh I, I know this is like completely off topic of what we were talking about but um i gotta say i agree um which is I another reason well. why yeah which is another reason why it's uh i guess it is kind of on topic because we're talking about why the game is um still a little bit better um uh, they, they didn't take any leaps um they didn't do anything different and they didn't um, expand on things that they did introduce earlier. Hence the hive mind. Um, I do really like the option to uh, get rid of the whole tunnel uh, sewer kind of bit from the, uh, the from the game. Yeah. Um, I did like that decision. Uh, You just make it quick and easy, have them walking through the camp. They get ambushed. Boom. That's how, that's how we get Joel knocked down Ellie in the um, hospital bed. Mm -hmm. I did like that. Um, I loved everything with Joel and his uh, suicide. And um, yep. Can you you say that on YouTube? I don't know. Joel and his um, (laughs) attempt on his life. Uh, I I love that so, so much um, because it expands on stuff that's already from the game. Um, But he said that they didn't take enough uh, creative freedom, enough leaps. Uh, Hence the hive mind, which I know you had brought up in an earlier um, episode. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, I've likened the hive mind thing and my, my, uh, my ideal thinking with that to just the show itself. I, I do agree with the people that, and, and what, what I mean by that, let me, before I go further, I guess um, there's a lot of people saying that they wish there were more infected in the show. That's not so much my complaint. I do somewhat agree with what those people are saying. But that's not so much – that's not what I'm trying to say when I complain about the hive mind thing. My thing with the hive mind is that I guess in complaining about the hive mind, yes, I do want more infected because I want to see the hive mind in action. But I just feel like for the show, just looking at the show itself, not even factoring in the game, for it to introduce something as monumental as the hive mind – for it to only be showcased once just seems really tacky to me. And it, it seems like a missed opportunity because it was a very, a really haunting thing. And when, when Joel killed that one in the, in the, in the Capitol building and you see the mycelium crawl up on the hand and it cuts to the horde that they were looking at earlier, my yeah. heart sinks for them. That is crazy. I'm like, Oh my God, get the hell out of there. Mm-hmm. And so there's lots of, maybe not lots, but there's other points that they could have used it. Um, And I get that it's like a a give and take kind of thing. Maybe you don't want it to feel too like ham fisted. Um, One could say that they could have used it in episode eight with the, with Elliot and, and David. Um, Cause that's something that a lot of people complained about from last week was that, um, They didn't feel like they trusted David because in the game, that's what that sequence of fighting off the infected with David served as is like, it helped you learn to trust David a little bit more. And then we later learned that that uh, trust was, was falsely placed, but, and I don't necessarily think that that would have enhanced the scene, uh, having the hive mind there. I think what they did, uh, what I think personally, I, I do think that they conveyed trusting David very, very well. Um, with that con- just that conversation that they have you can see ellie becoming more interested in what david has to say but I'm go- that's going off on a little bit of a tangent i just i don't know it it it, it was such a cool idea and i feel like it, it it seems like such a now bringing the game back into the conversation it seems like a, almost a needless change from the game to only use it once. And I know they already talked about it. They're going to use it more in season two. There's, they've already talked about, they teased there's going to be a lot more infected in season two. All great things. All stuff I want to hear. That's fantastic. I still just, that that doesn't take away the fact that like, you could have used it a little bit more here, I think. Uh, yeah. And and I've seen some people say that like, um you have like infected way out uh, having them way out in the wilderness and stepping on one out there wouldn't make sense. 
I guess, but like at the same time, didn't Tess say that they stretch for miles and miles underground, you know? So it's like, who's to say that there wouldn't be something out there like that, you know? And I don't know. Uh, it, they, they created the show. I don't think they did a terrible job with it. It's just, I have slight little minor critiques and I want to preface also like, me talking about the hive mind thing, I'm not saying that I needed more infected, I needed more action. I love what we got, but I just think the hive mind idea in and of itself was a really haunting thing. And I feel like they got away from the haunting nature that the show started out with, um, yeah, later towards the, the back half of the season. And, uh, and that kind of it kind of sucks, I guess, to, to a degree, because I, I really I was in, bro, for so much of it. Yeah. I was like the the two cold opens, the the hive mind running in after him, and then you you change that up a little bit by giving us one of the saddest modern love stories. Oh my god! And yeah, sad. Well, maybe not sad. Sad isn't the right. Bittersweet. Um, uh, modern love stories. You know it. <clears throat> and then they after that it kind of just gets away from all the ha the haunting sort of um, motifs, if that's the right word yeah um as for the part where um more more infected people wanting to see more infected i i don't know i just don't agree like i like that they kind of keep them like in kind of an every now and then thing it makes them more 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 haunting um and i know that takes been thrown around for ages like oh darth vader doesn't show up a lot which makes them even more menacing in the original trilogy and stuff like that um jaws for example um yeah. i think even godzilla yeah i would think it was godzilla in um, one of the first movies also um if i'm not mistaken just kind of not getting a lot of screen time that way every time you do see them it's even more um scary it's even more haunting and so i kind of like that but i do agree um with the whole hive mind aspect of it like how it, it just it makes the world more scary you could be a lone survivor walking in the woods you step on a hive or you step on one of those things whatever out of nowhere just boom and then just like a horde comes and just picks you apart all because you took the wrong step or yeah. whatever um even out in the wilderness it's like you just you can't you have to be so safe and it's not just being quiet walking around um it's even stuff like that stepping on something miles away and then just you're alone in the forest all of a sudden a horde just comes out of nowhere stuff like that just um probably could have capitalized on it a lot a lot more yeah i will say i mean there there are some creative leaps that they take though uh granted not huge but even just minor changes uh such as david being a school teacher and like a preacher and stuff preacher, just yeah. making them that much more scary yeah. I still can't get over him looking at Ellie and being like, I used to teach kids your age. Like, oh, That's, yeah, yeah. Come um, on, man. Speaking of creative liberties, I actually just saw a, a tweet today that Craig Mazin uh, in an interview was talking about um, how Ali Abbas, who was the director of uh, the finale, um, had an idea where the episode didn't end on Ellie saying, okay. Um, she says, okay, mm -hmm. and then she walks off towards Jackson without Joel, like just wait, well, not without Joel, but like just immediately starts walking, doesn't wait for Joel. And they sort of walk separated from each other oh. the rest of the way. And then that we leave the camera there and then we watch them walk away. And I actually really, I enjoy that. I think the reason they didn't go with that, well, Craig has gone on record saying that the last of us ending is perfect and he didn't want uh, to, to, to change it. And I understand that. Um, but also I, I think, um, they didn't want to, I feel like doing that makes it a much more clearer message, even more so than the way Bella performed the okay. Um, it's an even clearer message of, of how Ellie, what Ellie is feeling at, at that time, uh, since she's just storms off without him, like that immediately to me is like, oh, she damn well doesn't believe her. She doesn't yeah. believe him. She does not believe him at all. And she's pissed off now and she's walking off. And so I can understand why they didn't do that, but that yeah. that was something they I guess they threw around for a little bit. I loved I love the ending, man. Like I just love ending on okay, and then it's 
it's crazy because um, I obviously posted my reaction to it. So when I was editing it and trying to match up like the the clip and when I was screen recording the clip to put it in the, uh, the TikTok, um, I think for a moment it's like dead quiet. And then she says, OK, and then it cuts and that music just comes in like it yeah. comes in hard, dude. And it's like it, it's so damn good, bro. Like that end song. It was just perfect. Like. It was just perfect, bro. I loved it. Um, something uh, we haven't talked about at all yet. I want to touch on it. Ashley Johnson. Holy mm. shit. She's a damn good actor, bro. No, seriously, dude. Shit. I, I was so happy to see her on screen just absolutely <laughs> doing the damn thing. And, and, dude, they talk about this in the podcast a little bit. like, And it's so true when you think about it. Um they say that Troy Baker, like he plays Joel in the game, but mm -hmm. when you hear Troy talk, you don't hear Joel when you just hear Troy. But when you hear Ashley Johnson talk, you hear Dude. Ellie. You oh, yeah. hear Ellie, and so that amplifies it in such a way. Like it already is is poetic that she's playing Ellie's mom, but then mm -hmm. when she's playing Ellie's mom and you hear Ellie, like that, that is so. Oh my god, that is so so amazing! And dude, I was like, the way she played it when um, she was asking Marlene to uh, to kill her, and then Marlene's like, "I'll take the baby, but I can't kill you." And then she, how yeah. she pleads to Marlene, Marlene, dude, oh my god, I had chills. So damn good, bro. We need to put Ashley Johnson in more stuff, bro. They they <laughs> they should have kept her stuff in Avengers, bro. They are <laughs> they are messed up for that. That is so. That I'm pissed. Such a fumble, bro. Like, cap fumbled so hard. Seriously, like, I'm bro. sorry, bro. Dude, that would have been the best Stan Lee cameo, bro. Why'd they cut that? That would have been so... <laughs> Ask for her number, you moron, or whatever you said. <laughs> Dude, oh my god. Dude, the scene that got me was when she holds up the baby and she says, you fucking tell him, Ellie. I Dude. was like, dude, I honestly started crying, bro. Like, I, I legit started <laughs> crying. Yes. I loved it so much, dude. Um... It, she just uh, she just hit it bro and i i love that they I, like i love that take like because when you when you hear troy baker like you don't hear joel like he kind of has to get into that zone or or mm -hmm. like lower his voice but yeah. bro when when um ashley johnson was talking dude i was like that's ellie bro and it's kind of <laughs> scary because i'm like damn like <laughs> <you got> bella <laughs> ramsey like i know this is a new iteration and everything but that sounds that's that's fucking Ellie right there. Bro. Yeah, nope, hundred percent, one thousand percent, bro. And I, <laughs> that's why, I like, I uh, and I talked about it a little bit before the episode came out. Like, I, I wanted as much of her as we could get, and you know, I was I wasn't I wasn't disappointed with what we got. I don't think that they could just could have stretched it out um, too much further than they did. But I just, ah, oh, man, I want to see Ashley Johnson in more stuff, bro. Seriously, like that was, uh, that was that was just so great. Um, but she was awesome, dude. we touched on it a little bit, or you did, um, the uh, Joel suicide. Um, uh, sorry, <laughs> I don't know if you uh, said it for YouTube. Um, <laughs> Joel's, Joel's unaliving attempt, uh, self, <laughs> self unaliving attempt. Um, I loved that, man. That scene was fantastic, as, as morbid as it sounds. Mm. I don't mean for it to sound, um, depressing like that, but. I loved it so much. The way they both played it, especially Bella. I love the look that they give Pedro. Like right at like right when it ah, dude, everything. You can just tell everything by looking at their face. Um, but Pedro was like a banger in that scene too, bro. Just the way he delivered that line, like it wasn't the time that did it. It wasn't time that did it. Oh my god, bro. That was the that was the first line. The other line that I love in the in, in the episode was was um when he's down on the ground in the hospital and my Marlene's like, I don't have any other choice here. He looks up and he's like, I do. Dude, uh, I oh my god, bro. So good, dude. I loved it so much, bro. I love that scene with them too, bro. It was just like it was just, it was all just there, like the dialogue, the the emotions and like even like the face acting the emotional acting like bella bella kind of just looks at him and she's like and like kind of just like sighs or like her her shoulders drop mm -hmm. um and it's 
it just hits, dude. It hits. And she she knows. And the only thing she can say is, well, I'm glad things didn't work out that way or something like that. And Joel's like, yeah, me too. And I was just like, oh, dude, it, it, it hits so hard, bro. I love that scene so much. I, I just know like Sarah Sarah's just looking down on him, just smiling, bro. It's, I know that's, Damn, that's like bro, the cool you know thing to be? say, dude. I, yeah. <laughs> I saw someone like clowning on. It was like uh, <laughs> somebody was like, "Oh, I know Joel and Sarah are in heaven playing around," <laughs> and uh, she was like, "Girl, Joel ain't in heaven. <laughs> I got some bad news for you, Joel ain't in heaven." <laughs> Jesus. So funny, dude. Oh, yeah, it's foul, but she got it right. Um, I wanted to uh, to to talk about. Um, I guess I won't say his name uh, for for part two's sake. Um, the doctor, the doctor thing, which <laughs> you and Cortez on Twitter. That's just been that's been cracking. <laughs> <up>. <laughs> I love that video so much. It's so perfect. <laughs> like, oh, dude. I'm so glad I have it saved now. Dude, it's so funny. Um, when they lingered, they lingered on the shot. I was like, no, yeah. They, what are you doing? Yeah, they, 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 the camera panned down to him. Dude, you can even see like his brains on the ground a little bit too. Like, I, I, think, I think, let me, let me have to actually, I'm going to go check that out right now. But um, <laughs> I'm so, so surprised people caught um, Laura Bailey um in the background yeah yeah Yeah, i didn't i love the way they did that though because i'm sure she's going to play some uh some character in season two um the way like ashley johnson and troy baker played characters in season one i'm sure she's going to play someone in season two so they had a a mask on her so she we couldn't tell what she looks like but i'm like literally the moment the episode was over there, there was like people on Twitter were tweeting out that that was her. I was like, "How did you guys know that? I uh, you just know her from her eyeballs? That is well, crazy." <laughs> I, I think what happened. One of the first credits um, at the end says Laura Bailey as nurse. Oh, it does. Oh, yeah. Because I went back and I was like, because uh, uh, they were saying in Discord, and I was like, "Where?" I was like, "What do y'all?" So I went to. The, I was like, maybe they just said like in the credits because I what well, I said I was like, "What the fuck? Where?" And uh, Cortez was like. She plays a nurse, and I I went and looked, and I was like, I don't I don't see her. And I went and I uh, I went and looked at the credits, and it was like Laura Bailey as nurse. It's like, oh, so then maybe they just saw like, oh, Laura Bailey as nurse. I was like, oh, that's cool. And then people were like, no, that's her right there. I was like, holy, yeah, that's right. wild to me. Um, but no, yeah, they do hang on the shot of uh, him on the ground with there's brain matter right next to him right it looks like um that's crazy i love the way they did it though too like it was just without hesitation like it was just like he was nothing and yeah that's perfect i I feel like that's perfect for the way things are gonna go they should have did the (laughs) flamethrower no that's exactly (laughs) i made a joke about that before the the season came out (laughs) yeah that would have been too damn. Just hammer it. I home. wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't blame her, bro. I would not blame. Her. They were doing something. He was doing stuff like that. Um, Go ahead. We ain't gonna stop you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think um, I think that's all I had to talk about when it comes to yeah. this season. Um, it's been a been a damn ride. Um, to those of you who have been watching and listening to us. Uh, this entire season and just experiencing it for the first time. We appreciate you for uh, letting us be the your go-to Last of Us guys. You guys couldn't have picked anybody better. Trust, trust, trust. Um, mm-hmm. We hope to see you guys back with season two because we'll be back with season two whenever eventually that uh, ends up coming out. We're probably, we might um, cover some news and whatnot um, as it drops as well if we ever do any like news episodes um, as they're filming or something. Who knows? We'll see where trailer time reactions. takes us. Trailer reactions, yep, yep, exactly. Or breakdowns, I mean, for at least for here. Yeah. We'll talk about it. Um, but yeah, uh, for those of you who don't want to know Season 2 spoilers, thank you so much. If you're on YouTube, um, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss our weekly uploads. Uh, hit that like button. You know we're good for it. Even if you don't want to like it, go ahead and like it anyway. Or dislike it. I don't really care. You do you. Um, <laughs> Either way, pushes it out. Um, 
Sp- if you're on a podcast listening platform like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or anything like that, go ahead and drop us a rating. You know, we are good for it, and you are good to give it to us. Give us a five star, baby. Come on now. You know, you know, this was, I think, one of our better conversations on all of the episodes. I think this is, yeah. this was a, I really like this discussion that we had. So, yeah. five star rating would be much appreciated. But without further ado, we're going to jump into season two spoilers. So, thank you all so much for having a wonderful time with us. Endure and survive. And adios to those people. Peace. <laughs> and spoilers. In three, two, one, goal get, uh, Joel gets smashed in the head with a <laughs> golf club. <That's> nice. <laughs> um, I wanted to. I don't know who Laura Bailey is going to play in the in the second season. Um, mm-hmm. I wonder if she'll be uh, anywhere close to 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 Abby in that in that in that case. Um, I think that would be really cool. I wonder if like. Um, she would play uh who's who's maybe like a seraphite. She could play a seraphite. Yeah. Maybe. That'd be kind of cool. Um, but what I really wanted to talk about was I've seen some theories that the other nurse in the room was uh potentially Mel. Um, the way mm-hmm. they they might play that out a little bit differently, that Mel was actually like um Jerry's like right hand woman. And so um that would kind of speak to Abby's trauma a little bit better. Um, and, 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 and Mel would have that same sort of trauma because she not, she was in the room when it happened. Granted, Jerry's yeah. not her dad, like, like, like how Jerry is for Abby. But um, I think that that would actually be uh, really, really cool. Cause then Mel would ha- have a little bit more understanding of, of, why Abby feels the way that she does. But I also think at the same time, part of what makes that arc for Abby so well is that her friends realized that what she did to Joel was absolutely fucking horrific and fucked up. Yeah. Um, and so part of that, one of those, one of the big characters that, that think that it, it, it is Mel. And so I don't know if they'd be able to, if playing that that way would, would do the story a disservice. So I think it's a cool idea, but I don't know if it would work very well in execution. Interesting. Did you see all the people thinking that? Uh, which I don't, I don't. I don't think this is the. the uh, this is the case. But um, there's a shot where Joel's running up the stairs, and somebody dips off and runs away real fast. And Joel kind of looks, lets them go, and then kind of gets back behind the wall. People were saying that that could be Abby, um, yeah. because when that person is running, there's like a flick, and it looks ponytail. like a braid, yeah. Um, yeah. or like a ponytail, but. Um, a lot of people are like, no, that's very clearly a guy or that's just a soldier or whatever. Um, the only thing that I'm kind of like iffy on is he lets that person run away. And yeah. they very clearly show them getting away and escaping. Um, but I don't know. I don't think we saw Abby or, or anything. That's a, I really, it's, a, it's a fair observation. I will say yeah. um, my podcast guys that I listened to um, mm-hmm. kind of funny. They actually had Neil Druckmann on for a spoiler cast uh, wow. after the finale. And Neil Druckmann flat out confirmed that that was not Abby. That was oh, Abby. okay. Yeah. Interesting. So, I didn't know that. Yeah. I wonder, um, did we see Abby this episode? I don't think we did. I don't, I don't think, think so either. Did. Um, Which, you know, is it? It's honestly fine with me. Yeah it's, yeah, it's very much fine with me. I wanted to see her, but I understand like maybe why we didn't see her. Although I did, I will say I did see a TikTok that I actually kind of liked. I liked it the first time I watched it, but I watched it a couple more times. I'm like, ah, I don't really, I don't love it that much. But I really, really liked the first time. They said this is how they wish the the ending uh, of the of the finale would have went for the show, and it's Ellie saying okay, and then it cuts to black for a second and then you hear the sirens in the hospital going mm. off and then it's yeah. abby running up to the room and then is she like opens the door and like that that was where it, it cuts the black and the episode ends and so yeah I, I was like damn the first time i was like damn that would have been sick but after i watched it a couple times i'm like eh, you know it seems a little bit gratuitous at, yeah at i don't yeah i don't know how i'd feel about like a post a post credit scene 
and like we're just we're either in the eyes of abby or we're like third person and we see her go up to the door open it like see her dad and then just like scream i don't i don't know because a part of me is like i can see that being memed on twitter like oh what is this marvel what is this whatever <laughs> and uh and plus i think the ending was so perfect but at the same time it'd be pretty damn cool like because that i was also thinking because cool. that also takes away like the sort of moral ambiguity of the, of the question whereas like if because if you see like some like 15 year old girl walk into a room and, and scream about her dead dad you know like that yeah. people are more going to be more inclined to think or at least i would hope so more inclined to think that joel's actions were fucked up so yeah yeah um would have been pretty cool man i'm not gonna <laughs> lie it would have been pretty damn cool yeah but um i i am like i'm just thinking like this is recorded and so we can always come back to this right now in this point in time march 17th 2023 <laughs> what does the last of us 2 trailer look like the you know trailer like the trailer for season two um of hbo max sorry i said it that way. the trailer for season two of hbo max what does it look like you know because that's just like it's crazy and Honestly, the way I think they'll go about it is they'll spend this next season with most of the flashbacks. They'll show um, Joel and Ellie's relationship um, after Jackson, the rise and fall of it, um, mainly the fall of it. Uh, simultaneously, we'll get a little bit of Abby and we'll be like, oh, shit, this girl's the daughter of the dude that Joel killed in the first season up until the very end. I'm Tommy. This is my brother Joel, or whatever. <laughs> and then, <laughs> no. And then we get all that. Boom. Season two finale cliffhanger ends it right there. You can just end it with <laughs> Ellie screaming, no. Ooh, and then, damn. damn, damn, that would be a brutal cliffhanger. People bro. would be like, no. <laughs> yeah, dude. But I don't uh, know. As I also. Um, would you like okay so let's say we live in a world where that happens season two is flashbacks joel and ellie's relationship um i honestly feel like it's easier to age someone down in uh like prosthetics and makeup than it is to age someone up so you could fill that up bella ramsey will age about a couple more years from now until season three when we need her at like her peak or whatever mm -hmm. um and then like for the last couple episodes or whatever we can have old ellie I don't know. However you go about it. Let's just say we have the flashbacks. Boom. We end on that cliffhanger, right? Um, is there a way in that season two, if that's how it goes, and then season three is everything of that and on, would you want to see the, um, the scene of them two talking about forgiveness when she goes up to him and he has his coffee and he's like, if I had a chance, I'd do it all over again. Would you want to see that in season two or season three at the very end um, like it is in the game? And then Ellie sits there with her guitar. Boom. I think I like that at the end of the overarching story. So like season yeah. three, because okay. I think it adds so much um context to the story but at such like a non-conventional time um mm -hmm. like you would think you would get that sort of um i can't think of the word but you 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 would think you would get those details those story details um that wasn't the word i was looking for but we'll just go with that one um you think you'd get those story details earlier on to understand more why Ellie does what she does. Like, especially if you like, you're thinking she was, she's pissed at Joel. Like she, she's, she's, she was mad at Joel. Like, why is she, why does she care this much? Um, mm -hmm. So I love how they saved it for the end. And I, and I, and I really like that because like, you're sitting there like, 
oh my god bro like she she did all of this she everything that she did she did because she was about to try to forgive him she was about to take the steps mm -hmm. and those steps got fucking ripped out from right right out from under her and that i feel like that is so that's such a heartbreaking reveal um rather than like say they and see they do it in season two right before joel like they do it in the actual order of events they have that discussion i'm gonna try to forgive you and then and then joel dies i think it could work both ways sure but i just think i like the gut punch of it like revealing it afterwards i think it works mm -hmm. a little bit better because obviously you can still get the same effect of like if they have that discussion they show us having show, show them having that discussion before Joel dies. You'll sit there like, oh, my God. And they had a, that discussion last night and, and that kind of thing. It, it could be a very similar thing. But I think the gut punch of it at the end is so powerful because it was at the end like that. And I thought it came at a perfect time, too, in the in the game. Because, like, I was like, damn, I'm, I wish I wanted a little I want a little bit more Joel. And the yeah, that a little bit more Joel. Um. Yeah, the reason I say that is because I don't think they lose Pedro that early. I don't think we come into season two, episode one. Yeah. He gets hit with a golf club, and that's it. Like, and then the rest of season two and and three is like Ellie and her journey. I don't think you get rid of Pedro that fast. Um, and yeah, there's ways to work around it. You can have him come back as like a ghost or like as Ellie's conscience. Ellie's visioning him or hearing him, talking to him, whatever. Um, you can't have those things, but I think honestly, this is like the best. I, I really like this route. Um, using this season as like the aftermath of Ellie um, and Joel after he lies to her. And then after she finds out he's lying to her or that he lied to her and she's pissed at him. Um, or they could even split it up and be like, uh, come season two finale, he gets hit with a golf club goes to black and then it just cuts to her walking up to him uh, when he has coffee and she's like, I'd like to forgive yeah. you or I'd like to try. And he's like, I'd like that. And then cut back and she's like, no, what do you think of, I don't really think they're going to do this, but what do you think if they ended the second season with the cliffhanger of Abby getting to the theater? Um, where she points the gun and then because in the game right before that's right before the perspective switch where you start playing as abby yeah for like another 10 hours or however long it is what do you think oh. do you think they would do that and then have season three be abby's perspective or do you think that because like I, I i'll let you say your thoughts first actually before i say that. i don't know it's it's really the whole abby of it all dude i yeah. i don't know how fans are gonna react and that's what honestly scares me. I know Neil Druckmann said he doesn't care. <laughs> I care, bro. Like, I'm scared. <laughs> like, I don't know the whole fan aspect of it all. Because say they end it right there, and everyone's like, oh, my gosh, I want to know what happens next with these two. Like, oh, uh, season three comes, and it's, like, mainly Abby. Yeah. Then it's like, well, what do you do now? Like, how are fans going to handle that now? Exactly. Um, that's the hardest part of it all. Yeah, I feel like I, I I don't think they'll do that just because like uh, if you think about an entire season three of just Abby, you know how many people are probably not going to watch <laughs> like <laughs> the viewership would go down so low yeah. if they did that. I saw like <laughs> I think they have a monstrous task on their hands to try to space out the story in a in a in a great way to to keep everybody hooked. But mm -hmm. It's, it's hey. going to be interesting, dude, because I'm even scared about what's going to happen when Joel dies. Like, that's what honestly scares me. Um, and the funny thing is. Um, oh, actually, never mind. Um, but I'm hoping it's not. I haven't watched The Walking Dead, but I'm hoping it's not another like Glenn situation Glenn thing, based yeah. on all the things I've heard and seen. Um I'm really hoping it's not another one of that. I mean, both yeah. got their heads smashed in. <laughs> so like, it's it caused a, viewership to drop. So <laughs> it's a weird thing for me. Cause I, I think it's such a monstrous task. Cause like they don't, the structure of 
part two as a video game is just not going to transfer very well as a TV show at all. And so I feel like the hardest part of that, and granted, I've never written anything before, so maybe there are harder parts. Um, but the hardest part of that, I would imagine, is going to have to be to, to find the way to structure it the best way possible, where it doesn't feel like you're getting more of one than the other, but maybe that's the intention at some times. But if mm -hmm. that is the intention with getting more Abby, I feel like a lot of people are not going to like that. And it will turn a lot of people off from that season, yeah. whatever season it ends up being. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see, dude. Like uh, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm, I can't wait till we get to the point where like we're seeing, set photos or we're seeing like here's the first official still from the last of us season two um i think then we'll get like a even just like off one photo i think then we'll get a good perspective of, of what we can um expect and then obviously like the, the trailer um i think it'll be so interesting man um, yeah and I, i'm i'm really excited aren't they filming here in a couple like months they said they might start filming by the end of this year but oh what did i hear was filming in the next couple months i could have sworn they had talked about like the last of us was going to film like by the end of april or something maybe i'm maybe i imagine that i don't yeah i don't i don't remember hearing anything about that weird maybe it was something else um I, it's not bad on timing like i think we could probably see that early 2025 late 2024 <sighs> I hope so. Well, Brett. it depends what time they start filming at the end of the month. Because they at they the end of the year they they were filming this season in 2021, and so. Mm. Um. Okay. So, see what I'm thinking is like November, December, maybe October ish end of the year. I think we we probably see that around early to mid 2025 anything earlier than that could possibly be like late next year early 2025 i'm thinking just based on you don't typically see a show go into filming and then um go live in like almost an exact year later yeah. there's got to be some couple months in there of of leeway i remember the the filming schedule for this first season was a lot longer than uh than like it was way long when i first I, I believe it was almost a year it was like 11 months of shooting um fuck i think it started in like july 2021 and ended around um june 2022 i think and so um but for some reason i, I remember like what was it august 2022 i was still under the impression i didn't think we were going to get this this early in 2023 i thought we were going to get the show like halfway through 2023 um yeah it snuck but, up dude yeah no it did yeah when they revealed i remember when the release date was announced and i, I was i was so hyped because it was only like two months away back when, when they announced it or something so yeah they dropped yeah. it very close it's almost like uh like thor love and thunder i remember that trailer dropped super close to the release date um I remember the same thing with the last of us. I was like, damn, because I, I we were looking at my video, my trailer reaction. It's like <laughs> shit, three months ago. That's it. Yeah, like, no. That's, that's crazy. crazy for like trailer to end of season. That's I was wild. thinking a lot, like I was like, damn, nine weeks ago I sat down and watched the first one, first episode. I was so hyped. Damn. Yeah. Which is about nine like weeks too long. Yeah, no, that's crazy. That is so crazy. <laughs> Time flies when um, you're having fun. <laughs> yep. But I think uh, I think that's all I had to bring up about part two. Did you uh, have anything else? Um, I think that was about it. Just getting into the whole finale and um, spacing of it all yeah. uh, for shooting. Hope we see Abby. Hope we see Jesse, Dina, everybody. Oh, Jesse, get the whole bro. gang back. Oh, I can't. Yeah. See Steven Jesse, Yoon. Bro. <laughs> too, too just put him in everything dude i don't give a shit <laughs> no. did you see the trailer for um that netflix show he has coming out no dude um, it's called beef it actually looks really good i i heard about it who else is in it uh ali i forget her last name ali wong i want to say but i don't know if that is her last name 
It's Ali something, A L I. Damn, maybe okay, maybe I'm getting confused with something else. Um, I did did discussing film post about it. I think so. I think so. Because I thought it was a movie at first, but then I saw the poster and it said Netflix series. So wait, and it's called Beef? Yeah, it's called Beef. Okay, wait, now that's sounding really familiar familiar. I think it comes out April Beef something. TV. Beef trailer. Ali Wong. Ali Wong, that is okay. Oh. Oh yeah, I recognize it. Beef trailer. Okay, interesting. Dude, it's such a it's a actually a pretty good trailer. I love the oh, end. Dude, he looks crazy with the buzz cut. That's yeah, sick. No. <laughs> oh hell yeah. Um what what else was I gonna say? Uh oh Tetris featuring Taron oh, Edgerton. Yeah. Check your theater. I don't do you have an Alamo? Oh fuck, you don't. Nope. Um I think the Alamo, the Alamo um it sucks because uh the only Alamo doing this is 50 minutes away from me. But what they're doing is it's a five dollar ticket. Um, but you buy the five dollar ticket, and then everything you buy in there is like five dollars off. So it's a free movie ticket, essentially. So yeah. boom, I'm spending five bucks. I go in there, say I spend 20 bucks on food, it's really fifteen dollars. So like that yeah. that movie ticket's essentially free. Um, I think it's a Netflix movie, so um yeah, dude, I checked. It's like almost all the way sold out. Damn. Tetris? But That's crazy. It's Taron Edgerton, dude. That's but true. But apparently, like, the South by Southwest, um, the uh, South by Southwest reviews were, like, really good. Also, Inside. Um, oh, is that the Willem Dafoe? Ah, oh, dude, I want to see that so bad. <gasps> Bro. When, wait, when does it come out? Inside? I have no idea. Is that a streaming on. service one too or no? Um, I don't think so. Maybe. When does it come out? Because I'm looking right now and it's like there's screenings for it like today. Really? Yeah. Yo, that's insane. Wait, what? But look at this theater, bro. <laughs> like, is, is that not, not a small ass theater? Yeah, that's super small. What the hell? Should I go? <laughs> <laughs> Screw it. Why not? What? That's insane. Anyways, um, but yeah, apparently it's like uh, the South by Southwest early showings. Like, there was like no bad reviews. And like, bro, like, it's Taron Edgerton, bro. <laughs> it's my guy. My guy. Um, shit, I'm going to look more into this. Uh, Inside? Yeah, dude, because if it's showing tomorrow. Yeah, that's a good. that would be a good one to watch, 100%. Yeah. Anyways, I'm good oh. on Last of Us Part 2. Um, I guess that about wraps this up. Yeah. Everybody, if you're still listening. Thank you for uh, sticking with us the full hour and a half. That's insane. Uh, Shazam movie review out on Aiden H Talks right now. Peep Shout out it. to the GOAT over here for the greatest thumbnail ever made. <laughs> Still obsessing nah. over it. Um, I got I to gotta one up Ben somehow, bro. You know, you gotta be- <laughs> that is a peak thumbnail, bro. I'm looking at Damn, that shit is clean. I love that. I hope, uh, dude, it already has like what three views? Damn, hey. son. Damn, hey, son. Thumbnail, thumbnail could go a long way. Uh, oh, the Creed one up, updated actually, too. Oh, yeah, it did. Cool. There Hell you yeah. go. Yeah, so now you can kind of take that one in, too. Oh, well. Oh, I didn't put the outline on it. That's what I forgot to do. On, on, do that. on Adonis? On me and Adonis. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll go back and do that. Anyways. That has been The Last of Us Season 1, Episode 45 from the Words from Nerds Podcast. If you listen to every episode, mm, thank you. You're a real one. If you listen to the full episode of, of this one, thank you. You're a real one. Um, it's late for me and Charlie. We got to get out of here. Thank you for listening. Five stars and everything. Like, sub, any support matters. Any support is good support. Um, any feedback is good feedback. 
John Wick coming up, uh, Super Mario Bros coming up, Bo is Afraid coming up. We got a ton of movies, dude, and I'm I'm I'm, I'm even forgetting more. Um, Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah, Dungeons and Dragons um, should be fun, and we will be here. You best believe that. If we think it's worth a discussion, we'll come in and give it a discussion. Shazam, <laughs> absolutely shit the bed. But we're not gonna talk about that. One. I still have to see it tomorrow, guys. So we'll see. We'll see what Charlie thinks. Um, but yeah, that has been the Last of Us finale. Thank you for supporting. We will catch you on the next one. Adios. Peace. Hey, wait, am, am I to your left for you?